In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a non-destructive editing technique I find very useful for creating multiple versions or variations of a single sample. Today I'll be using a drum break and will be showing you how to quickly create a selection of unique parts and variations. First, let's make sure we're in session view. If you're not, you can just click the tab button to tab over to that view from the arrangement view. Let's drag a drum break onto one of our clip slots. I'll use a break from the KJ Sokka Hospital Records collection. Let's take a listen to that break. The tempo automatically gets set to 130 beats per minute since I'm selecting a pre-edited break and the warp function is on. So this drum break is already tempo synced as soon as I drop it onto the track. I'll double click the clip to open the sample editor if it doesn't automatically open and you can also click the little arrow in the bottom right corner to unfold that view. Notice that when I grab the loop bracket and move the loop end forward, I'm shortening the loop. Let's take a listen to what that shortened loop sounds like. I haven't deleted any audio, which is why this is a non-destructive method, but I'm shortening the section that's looping nonetheless. Now that I've got a shorter loop, say this one bar here, I'll highlight the break clip and hit Command D, which is the hotkey for duplicate, and make a few more copies. Not only am I copying the clip and the audio, but also the reference points of that shorter loop. So now on the second version, I'll change that loop point and thereby change the part of the sample that plays when the clip is triggered. You can do this by dragging the loop start and end points, and you can get really creative outcomes choosing uneven start and end points for the loops but I'll keep it simple for this demonstration. You can also highlight the loop brace and hit the up and down arrows to jump by a duration equal to the brace. Or use the left and right arrows to nudge the brace by whatever the quantized resolution is set to. So observe while I create a different loop in each one of these clips. Notice that when I play each clip, it's the same audio, the same sample, but starting, ending, and looping in a different place. Now I've got four variations of this break with very little effort. You can apply this technique to anything, vocals, melodic content, MIDI, found sounds, and you can do this with or without warping and with or without quantization, so the possibilities are really endless. Now that you have these variations, there are many things you can do with them. You can keep them in session view and arrange them vertically along with your other content in your scenes. You can set follow actions to achieve some randomness and experiment with arrangement. Or you can drag them into the Arrange view and arrange them horizontally along with your multi-track recording or programming. I could do an entire video on follow actions alone, so I'll leave that for another day. But let me demonstrate how to switch these over into Arrange view. To visually flip over to Arrangement view quickly, just hit the Tab key. If you grab your clip and drag it to the top right corner where there are two circles with horizontal and vertical lines, you can move clips back and forth between the views. Just hold the clips over the lines, and when you're in the view you want, drag and drop the clip to where you want it. A clip can only be playing in one view or the other, so when you trigger a clip in session view, it sets the preference from there on to session view. To change to arrangement view, simply click on the Back to Arrangement button at the top here. Notice that the clips were previously deactivated or grayed out in this view, but will now play after we clicked the Back to Arrangement button. I hope you found this tutorial useful. Stay tuned to lynchaudio.com for more Ableton tips and tutorials, and as always, don't hesitate to contact me with questions or tutorial requests.